Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the operating section of the statement of cash flows. This topic is covered in introductory accounting course, intermediate accounting, where I have more explanation about this topic, as well as the CPA exam. It's an important topic on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all my courses, including many CPA questions. If you like my recording, please like them, share them, put them in playlists, subscribe. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources if you want to supplement your accounting education and or pass your CPA exam. So simply put, if you are looking to get those 10 to 15 extra points on the CPA exam to succeed and put the exam behind you, I strongly suggest you check out my website. Also, if you'd like to learn about an introduction about the cash flow statement, I do have a previous session. Check the description for the playlist and you can and you can see the previous session. So in this session, we're going to talk about one section of the cash flow statement, which is the operating activities. Then in the next two sessions, we'll, we'll devote one for investing and one for financing. That, that, then at the end, I will work a comprehensive example that will have all three sessions in one session. This way, you can put all this statement of cash flow together. So in the prior session, we looked at the operating section. And what I said is, let's assume we are, we are preparing an operating section for a restaurant. What would the operating section involve? Would it involve the operating of the business? So the operating section will have two sections, an inflow of cash and an outflow of cash. What constitute the outflow of cash? So as a restaurant, what do they spend money on? What do they spend money on? They spend money on employees. They spend money on supplies. They spend money on goods, goods to be sold. They have to pay supplier for goods. They have to pay wages. They have to pay operating expenses. They have to pay for the internet. They have to pay for the TV. They have to pay for the utilities. They also have to pay taxes and fines for operating the business. They have to pay interest on their debt. All of those are considered operating activities outflow of cash. Now the business, the restaurant, what's their inflow of cash? Obviously their largest inflow of cash is customers. These people that attend the restaurant and they buy stuff cash sale from customers, collection from customers. If you sell on account, it's collection from customers. Receipts of dividend revenue. If you have investments in stocks and they pay you dividend, that's an operating activity. Receipts of interest revenue. If you have money in the bank and you receive interest from the bank, that's considered interest revenue. That's also operating. And you want to have more cash inflow than cash outflow. So let's take a look at a skeleton of the statement of cash flow. This is what the statement of cash flow would looks like. And we're going to look at an actual one, actually build one. We're going to have three section operating. It would list the inflows and the outflows. Then at the end, we net them. We either have a plus or a minus. Then we have the investing section. Again, we're going to list the inflows and the outflows. We'll, we'll work on this section next time. The third section is financing, inflows and outflows, the same thing. You know, we're going to have either a plus or a minus at the end. Then we net them all out, net increase or decrease. It's either plus or a minus. Then we add to the prior balance in cash. Then we find the ending cash. Don't worry, we're going to work with numbers. But to show you what it looks like, what a statement of cash flow looks like, uh, this is the, I believe this is best buy. This is the best buy cash flow statement. This is the operating section, investing section, financing section. And at the end, we'll talk about this later on. So in this session, we're only focusing on this section. And let me just tell you what this section looks like. This section look positive, operating cash flow for 2019, positive 2018 and positive, positive 2017. It means they have a positive operating cash flow. What did they do? They net all these out, which, were, which, will, which we will have to do that in this session. So in this session, we're going to be focusing on this operating section specifically and hopefully I would remember I will come back and show you at the end what we did and why it makes sense for that for that matter so let's take a look at the steps in preparing the statement of cash flow first we have to compute 
net increase or decrease in cash. We're going to look at the, each one, each of these steps separately. Step two, we'll compute the cash from operating activities. We're focusing on this section, on this step here. And for this step, we're going to have five steps, five sub steps. Then we would look at compute net cash from investing. This is the next session. Financing will have a session. Then at the end, we add the change to the beginning cash. So those are the five steps to complete the whole cash flow statement. I'm only focusing on this step for now. So step one, step one is pretty easy. All what we're looking to do is to look at the cash account and look at the difference between the beginning and the ending. So simply put, this is the cash account. And we started with the beginning balance, December 31st, 2018, 12,000. December 31st, 2019, 17,000. All what we say here is the cash went up by 5,000. Now, let me tell you something. If if a company, if that's all what they have, in other words, if all, that's all, this is all the information that they have, I can prepare a cash flow statement right now from this information alone. Because why we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only have nine different activities. And I can tell you which activities which which is which for example receipt from customers this is operating uh, receipts from the asset sale this is investing we'll see that later all what i'm saying is it's easy to do so i can prepare a cash flow statement now but in a real company you don't have nine transaction you have nine million cash transactions which is a lot so that's why you have to prepare the cash flow statement to find out where did the cash came from so but the first step is to find the difference between the beginning and the ending that's step one. Step two is to look at, uh, not step two, another way to look at the cash flow statement, let's approach it from the ac accounting equation. And what is the accounting equation? If you remember assets equal to liabilities plus equity. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take assets and break them into two components. Cash is one type of asset and all assets together. So cash plus non-cash assets equal to liabilities plus equity. That makes sense because Assets is composed of cash and non-cash, uh, cash and non-cash. Now, what we can do is then we can just uh, eliminate the cash on one side. If we put the cash by itself, what we find out is liabilities, the increase in liabilities plus the increase in equity minus the decrease in non-cash assets should, should give us, should give us, should give us, uh, should give us uh, the change in cash. But this is basically the way we look at it from an, the accountant equation. So, so hopefully this makes sense to you. But you will see, this is really what we're doing. We're going to look at the increase in liabilities, the increase in equity, and the reduce in non-cash assets. And this is going to give us the delta, the change in cash. And you will see how shortly, not, not in this session, but you will start to look at this process. Okay, let's take a look at steps and up in, in, uh, in step two. So remember, step two, compute the operating section. For the operating section, I use those five steps. So I use those five steps. You know, it's it's not a rule, a FASB rule or anything, it's just I made them up, okay? What is a step one? I'm gonna go over the steps and we're gonna execute those steps to show you how to prepare a statement of cash flow operating section. First, we will start with net income or net loss, either net income or net loss. We're gonna always assume we have net income because we could also have net loss. Then the second step, step number two, we're gonna add non-cash expenses. What are non-cash expenses? Expenses that we list on the income statement, but in reality, they don't consume cash. What are we talking about here? Well, think about depreciation expense. When you book depreciation expense, when you debit depreciation expense, $10,000, you don't credit cash. Remember, you don't credit cash. You credit accumulated depreciation, $10,000. We call this, we call this, we call this a non-cash expense. Non-cash means we recorded the expense without, without incurring the cash, without spending, spending the cash. Another example is bad debt expense when we debit bad debt expense 5000 we credit allowance for bad debt again the same concept we did not we did not credit cash we credited another account so notice we did not 
credit cash. So those are called non-cash expenses, non-cash expenses. Okay, same thing with amortization as well as many non-cash expenses. So what we do with those, we're gonna scan the income statement and any see we anytime we see any of these expenses, we're gonna add them up. So we start with net income and add those non-cash expenses. Why? You may be asking, why are we adding non-cash expenses? Because those expenses reduced net income. They did indeed reduce net income, but did not reduce cash. So all we're looking for is our cash, not net income. Reduce net income without reducing cash. Okay. Three, we're going to deduct gains. Hold on a second. So if we have a gains, you are saying we are going to deduct the gains? And the answer is yes. Why? Think about it. If we sell something for a gain, let's assume we bought a piece of land for 100000 and we sold it for 120. Let's look at the journal entry. We debited cash, 120. We credited the land, 100,000, and we have a gain of 20,000. So this is what the journal entry would look like. We have cash of 120, credited the land, and credited the gain. Now what happened with this gain, this gain increased net income by 20,000. That's good. But did we receive $20,000 in cash? And the answer is no. We received 120. So hold on a second. If we receive 120, why are we deducting the cash from the operating? Because this whole 120,000, because this whole 120,000, it's going to go somewhere else. It's going to go into another section called investing. Therefore, you did not really get $20,000 in operating. You receive 120, but this 120 will be counted somewhere else because buying and selling land is not an operating activity. So that's why you do so. Now, same thing with this example of land. Let's assume, let's assume we sold this I land at a loss. And then I made it tomorrow. Let's assume we sold this land at a loss. And let's assume we sold it for $80,000. So we debited cash 80,000, credited the land 100,000, and we have a loss, a debit loss of 20,000. I should have put the debit after the land, but that's fine. Now what happened is this loss, this loss, this twenty thousand, oops, this twenty thousand dollar loss, this loss reduced my net income, reduced my net income by twenty thousand. But did it reduce my cash? Did it reduce my cash by twenty thousand? And the answer no. It reduced my my net income, but it did not reduce my cash. What does that mean? It means if it did not reduce my cash, I have to add it back because it reduced my net income. Because what I'm doing, I'm, I want to know what's my cash net income. That's the purpose. So I have to add back, add back the losses. So you're saying, but I received $80,000 of cash. That's fine. This $80,000 will be counted in the investing activity. We'll see later on. Okay, so that's why I deduct the gain and add the losses. Another way to look at adding the losses, if that makes if that makes it easier for you, the losses are like a non-cash expense. They reduce net income without reducing the cash. If that makes it if that makes it easier for you to understand. And the gain, it's it's a revenue. I think of it as a non-cash revenue. Non-cash. So it increased our revenue, but it's a non-cash revenue. So it's increased our net income, but did not increase our cash. So that's why we deducted because we're only looking for cash. Now, after we are done with the income statement, we have to analyze current assets and current liabilities. Why current assets and current liabilities? Because current assets and current liabilities are considered operating assets. We use them to operate. We use them to operate the asset. We use them to operate to operate the business. So we're going to analyze them. How are we going to analyze them? So I'm going to delete everything and explain to you how do we analyze how we analyze current assets and current liabilities. So let's start with an account called account receivable. Hopefully we all know what account receivable is. Account receivable is account receivable is an asset. It's a current It's a current asset. It's a current asset. And let's see what happened from year to year. Let's assume our account receivable was $100 year one. And in year two, it became one. I'm sorry, this is year one. In year two, it became 150. Let's examine the change. So this is year two, year two, 150. So the net is a plus 
50 or plus 50,000. What does that mean? It means our, our account receivable went up by 50,000. What does it mean really? What does it mean if it went up by 50,000? It means that you, we sold, we sold 50,000 on account, but did not receive the cash. One more time, what does that mean? Well, it means if you look at your account receivable, if we analyze account receivable, the beginning was 100, the ending was 150, so the net change is 50. It means for, the, for this period of time, we sold 50,000 more on account, we sold 50,000 more on account than what we received from customers. Well, what does that mean? It means if we sold more on account, it means those were non-cash sales. So simply put, if account receivable went up, we're gonna deduct 50 from net income. Why? Because we only want cash net income. Now, the opposite is true. If account receivable was 100 in year one, then account receivable went to 80 in year two, it means we collected $20. Why do I know we collected $20? Because if we went from, if we went from 100 to 80, we went down 20. What does that mean? Why do account receivable goes down? Account receivable goes down when you collect money. And I'm looking for money. I'm looking for cash. If my account receivable went down, it means I collected more cash. What does that mean? It means I add 20 to net income. I add $20 I collected in cash to my net income because I am converting, I am converting net income to cash net income, to cash net income. Okay. I hope, I hope this makes sense. Now let's analyze inventory let's analyze inventory so before i analyze inventory so account receivable account receivable up cash flow down account receivable down cash flow up so so we already kind of we already kind of established this we, we, we established this now let's let's look at inventory let's look at inventory and do the same thing with inventory let's assume our inventory for year one was 100 our inventory for year two is 120 okay so our inventory went up by 20. what does that mean what it means we bought inventory and we did not sell it that's one thing it means we bought inventory and we did not sell it notice because we have a net increase in inventory so if we bought inventory we are going to assume we are going to assume that that, that inventory is purchased on credit it doesn't have to. Don't worry about this assumption. We're going to take care of it when we analyze the liabilities. But since inventory went up, so we say since inventory went up, cash flow must have went down. Now, if we started with 100 and in, and, and for year one, and in year two, and in year two, let's see, in year two, it's not erasing. I'm not sure why. My eraser is not working. So let me just cross this number. In year two, it became 80. So inventory went down by 20. What can we assume? Well, we could assume two things. We sold the inventory or we purchased less inventory than the prior year. Well, if inventory went down, it means cash flow went up. So notice, if inventory went down, cash flow went up, it's the same as account receivable. When one goes up, the other one goes down. When one goes up, the other one goes down okay i hope i hope this makes sense now we can take this rule and apply it to all to all current assets let me give you an example a more kind of vivid example that illustrate this is prepaid let's assume you have a prepaid account the prepaid was 100 in year one then the prepaid became 120 in year two well how do you, your prepaid went up by 20. how do you acquire prepaid Let, just listen to me prepaid we paid for them so if my prepaid went up my cash flow must have went down okay same thing as inventory same thing as account receivable and the same thing happened if my prepaid goes from 100 to 80 my prepaid went down by 20. what does that mean it means i am consuming prepaid that i already purchased so i'm not spending the money now i already spend the money in the past 
and I'm expensing the prepaid now. Well, as far as I know, if my prepaid goes down, it means I did not spend money this year. It means my cash flow, I can serve my cash flow by 20. Simply put, so to make a general a general statement, let me erase everything. Hopefully it will erase. Let me try it one more time. My eraser is not working. So let me just tell you real quick what happened. If your current asset goes up, your cash flow goes down. If your current asset goes down, your cash flow goes up. Obviously, current assets except of cash because we are analyzing cash. That's the whole purpose of this. So this is what you need to know about current assets. Now I cleared my screen, we can work on current liabilities. Current liabilities is easier to understand the relationship between current liabilities and and uh, and cash. Let's assume we have an accounts payable. We have oh, let's let, let's make it notes payable. Let's assume we have a note and we had $100 of loans year 1 and for year 2 we have $80 in year 2. So let's think about it. What happened to our loan? Our loan went down by $20. What does that mean? Why would your loan go down? Your loan go down when you pay it, when you pay it. So if my if my notes payable goes down, my cash flow goes down. Well, let's change the scenario. I have 100 in year 1, 120 in year 2. In year 2. Now my 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 liability went up by 20. Well, what does it mean? If I have more loans, it means I have more cash. So if my notes payable goes up, it means I have more cash. So notice it's a positive relationship between liabilities and your cash flow. More liabilities means more cash. Less liabilities means less cash. Because if you have less liabilities, to have less liabilities, you have to pay them off. To pay them off, you have to consume cash and that's why um, they go hand in hand and the same concept would apply to accounts payable just take notes payable think about accounts payable use the same thing take it out use wages payable it's exact same concept when your liabilities go up it's good for your cash it means you are not using cash you are not using your cash okay and this is another 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 picture of what I just said okay so Change in the balances, current asset. If it increase, you subtract from that income. Simply put, I like this. Current asset up, cash flow down. Current asset down, cash flow up. Current liabilities up, cash flow up. Current liabilities down, cash flow down. Now, now I just said so. It doesn't have to be current liabilities. I can say assets up, cash flow down. Assets down, cash flow up. Liabilities up, cash flow up. Liabilities down, cash flow down. So it doesn't have to be current. This applies to all assets and all liabilities. And the reason I say this because soon you will see we're going to have to deal with uh, other assets other than current assets, other than current assets, if that makes sense. Okay. Now the best way, to, obviously, to illustrate this is to actually work an example. And to work an example, we need a two-year balance sheet to, in order to complete a cash flow statement because we need two years of balance sheet, competitive balance sheet, two years. We need this year income statement and we might need additional information. If this information is uh, is needed, it will be given in the problem. Okay? So let's take a look at this, at this example. We have Genesis. We have their income statement right here. We have the competitive balance sheet right here and we have the additional information. So we're going to read this uh, we're going to read this uh, this information uh, to analyze the to analyze what we are giving. So first, we are giving the income statement. This is their sales five hundred and twenty five hundred and ninety thousand minus cost of goods sold minus wage minus operating expenses minus interest expense minus depreciation gives us this number, which is uh, um, forty three thousand. Now, if we take the forty three thousand, we subtract the loss, we add the gain. We get our income before taxes, and we take out the taxes, we get the net income of 38000 So this is the income statement, which we're going to have to deal with pretty shortly because our starting point to complete the operating section is the income statement. So that's that. Then 
We are giving uh, additional information. The accounts payable balance result from inventory purchases, purchases of 60,000 of plant asset, sold plant asset, receive 15,000 from issuing stocks. Those are additional information. As they become necessary, we'll deal with them, okay? So step one is to compute your change in cash. We already did this. So we're gonna have to explain this 5,000 increase in cash. Now, when we are dealing with the operating section, we're gonna be dealing with current assets, which are these, this section here, and current liabilities, this section here. Those are the two sections that we're gonna be dealing with, okay? Current assets, not cash. And we have three current assets and three current liabilities, okay? So then we went, then we compute the change. Account receivable went up by 20,000, inventory went up by 14,000, prepaid went up by 2,000. Uh, accounts payable went down by 5,000, interest payable went down, and income taxes payable went up. So we compute the changes in the accounts that we're gonna be analyzing. So this is the information that we're given. Now remember the five steps that I, that I just showed you. Remember the five steps, let's go through the five steps again. First, so let me go through the five steps again, then we'll start to execute them, okay? So start with net income, add non-cash expenses, deduct gain, uh, add losses, analyze current assets and current liability. So copy those steps down because I'm gonna be using those steps to prepare the cash flow, the operating section of the cash flow statement. So given this information, given this information, here's what I, here's what I can do. Let me just, uh, snap this uh, snap this and I can show you what I'm gonna be doing let me snap it give me one second okay let me snap this this information so step one it says step one it's it reads start with net income that's easy I am giving net income I'm given net income of 38,000 so I'm gonna start with net income of 38,000. This is step one. This is my starting point. Then it says add, if you don't have the steps, go back and get the steps. It says go to the income statement and add any non-cash expenses. Well, I see depreciation expense of 24. So I'm going to add 24,000 of depreciation expense. Now I will scan the income statement, not only for depreciation expense, I scan it for um, something other than depreciation expense, such as bad debt expense, amortization expense, so on and so forth. I don't see this. So I'm done with step one. I'm done with step two. Step three and four. Uh, step three, it says, if there's any gains, which we have, subtract the gains, subtract $16,000 of gains, and we have losses, add the losses, add the losses. So basically I went through step one, this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, and this is step four. Real quick, I already finished four of the five steps, four of the five steps. And all what I'm doing is I'm saying, all what I'm doing is I'm saying this depreciation expense reduce this number, but without reducing cash. Therefore, add back 24,000. This loss reduce net income without reducing cash, add 6,000. This is what I'm doing. And this number increase net income without increasing cash reduce net income by sixteen thousand. This is what I'm doing. So let me show it to you on the on the on the PowerPoint. So basically, this is what I have. I have this is how you prepare the operating section. Cash flow from operating. We start with net income. Step one. Then I make adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash provided by operating activities. Basically taking net income and turning net income into cash net income. Add depreciation expense, add the loss, deduct the gain. This is what I did. I went through step one, two, three, and four. All what I'm left with is step five. That's the only step that I need to do. And basically step five, you remember step five is to analyze current assets and current liabilities. And I told you, current asset up, cash flow down, so on and so forth. You know the rules. And here's what I have. So check it out. I, they already did all the computation for me. So I have all the computation. All what I have to do now is compute them, is to put them together. Then I will I will show you. Account receivable went up. If AR went up, it means subtract $20,000 from net income. 
if if inventory went up inventory went up an increase in inventory subtract 14,000 from net income prepaid went up subtract deduct 2,000 of net income done now I have to focus on my current liabilities accounts payable I'm gonna use a different color this way you know I'm dealing with another class of account account payable accounts payable went down it means cash flow went down five thousand dollar interest payable int payable went down it means my cash went down by a thousand dollar income taxes payable taxes payable went down oops excess taxes payable went up an increase well if it increase it means I did not pay cash it means plus ten thousand dollar cash if if income taxes payable went up it means I am booking income tax expense without paying the bill why because I'm crediting income taxes payable it means it's a positive cash so simply put here's the here's what I just did but here's how you present them on the cash flow statement changes in accounts receivable it, it went up negative cash inventory went up negative cash prepaid went up negative cash decrease in accounts payable negative 5,000 decrease interest payable negative and increase in taxes payable positive remember those are liabilities and those are the assets simply put I'm ready to put all my these are the steps again this is what I just did starting with net income make the adjustments to depreciation depletion amortization loss then gains so I did you know step one step two it's you know this is step one two three and four and step five is analyze current assets and current liabilities this is what I did and this is basically the final the final picture the final product this is the operating section starting with net income step one depreciation expense step two step three step four step five this is how I break them down and bottom line what happened is the company made 38,000 in accrual net income on a cash basis they only made 20,000 it means they did not make as much cash as they thought from an as as much as net income from a cash perspective so yes they are at a profit but from a cash perspective they are less than 38,000 less than net income let's go back to Best Buy I'm glad I remember because I started the illustration by showing you Best Buy so let's go back to Best Buy and show you what we just did look at that intimidating cash flow statement for Best Buy and basically Best Buy starting with net earning net earning is net income then they add back depreciation and amortization they add back something called restructuring charge which is you don't have to worry about it's beyond the scope of this course but it's a non-cash expense they add back stock compensation expense also a non-cash expense deferred income tax is the same thing those are you're just not familiar with those but those are all non-cash expenses then they analyze the changes in assets and liabilities receivable went down it's a plus it seems receivable went down no, it's, no, it's a plus merchandise inventory went up it's a minus other assets went up it's a minus accounts payable went that went up it's a plus so notice and this is what they come up with they come up with actually on a cash basis they did better than than the net income so on a cash basis they earned 2.4 billion or 2400 from a net income perspective they only earn 1464 so basically we are done with this section now that please stop thank you so, so from from a cash flow perspective they did better than net income as always if you if you like this recording please like it share it put it in playlist don't forget to visit my website for additional resources share it with others especially these days with the coronavirus if you're looking for additional resources check out my website oh, I can help you pass the exam you only need maybe 10 to 15 extra points my resources will help you achieve the achieve it good luck study hard and stay safe